Hi there. <clears throat> Welcome to another songwriting crazy session with me, Rick Beresford. Thrilled to be here, veteran that I am, from Vietnam, 67, 68. But we're not worried about that. Here's Mrs. OEF5. Hey. Good to see you. Today, um, we're going to talk about the creative process because, I mean, what's the sense of having songwriting lessons if you don't know how to... Yo! Mr. 2, Mr. Two 1214. Good to have you on board. Um, so, uh, we're going to do that today. I'm going to wait just a little while to make sure everybody gets up and running here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the meantime, I can share with you the song that I'm working on, that I've been working on, that I started in the first session, and I think I went into the second session with it as well. Um, I can... Uh, Oh, well, we got a, we got something else going on here. What's that? Uh, oh, Brett. Hey, Brett. Glad to have you here. Um, yeah, I got uh, I I kind of went crazy with this thing, you know, the kicking and screaming idea. Um, it got kind of wild, and uh, it took off. I, I've been listening to Bob Dylan. And uh, it's a whole lot of fun listening to him, uh, even though he only sings three notes now, which is pretty powerful three notes, though, I gotta say. Uh, Kicking and a screaming, didn't know which way was up. Got on my feet and hit the street, ended up getting cut. Went down to Mobile looking for for killing, knowing I could find a mark. I threw the dice looking for the light, but it only came out dark. Thought I was the only one crying. Then I figure this part out. And I found out this whole world. Then I downed it down. I found out this whole world is kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming. And then I, and then, uh, uh, but it's, but it's, but as luck would have it, I cured the habit by it. But as luck would have it, I got have it, I got cured. As luck would have it, I got cured of the habit by a tall green-eyed bartender. She was on my screen. She was on to my scheme. She was on to my scheme and advised me to leave. So we both went on a bender. Luck only travels one way. Luck only travels down a one-way street. It wasn't long before it crashed in a flat in Queens. It was quite a scene. In the morning, I was missing cash. Yes, I was. I thought I was the only one crying. This whole world is kicking and screaming. I found out this whole world is kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. 
kicking and screaming. Let's see. But she left a note, told me where to go, so I followed her directions well to a coffee shop with a thicker plot or to a coffee bar where I found my car beating all to hell but those blue those eyes of blue they knew how to but those eyes of blue knew how to spot a fool so we talked for three hours straight there like nails in my coffin and a down by the dead way see I don't know where this thing's going it's just this may be a shaggy dog story I don't know but it was fun just going with this storyline. Uh, you know, my, my daughter lives in New York, and I have a lot of experiences, you know, just walking the streets of New York. And uh, so I was just kind of tapping into that and, you know, the just the, the vibrations of all the, of all the movies I've seen and, you know, all the stuff that I've heard about New York City. And so that's where, that, that's where, it, that's where it is right now. Um, that's as far as I got. <laughs> So, I don't know. I see a bunch of people here. Uh, oh, okay, we got it. We got this. Good. Brett Fire. Good. Uh, good to have you here. Let's see. Um, let me go back to. Uh, back to there. I am. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's where I am. That's where I kind of landed on that. Uh, it went kind of. Went on. A, went on a little trip, didn't it? Uh, I, I wanted to end the song. The, the idea that I had for the last, uh, in the last session was, I thought uh, he would end up having a, you know, uh, she's, uh, it was a baby girl, uh, cutest thing in the world. And she came out kicking and screaming, you know, like, you know, babies, that's how they come out anyway. So I was going to have it end on a, maybe on a happy note, but you know, maybe not, maybe not. That was just a wild idea, you know, <clears throat> one of the things, because I'm a country songwriter, one of the techniques I, I always use whenever I start a song is, is there a twist to this song? Can I, can I twist it in some way? And that would, be a, that would be a great example of a twist, where it starts off, the song's pretty negative, you know, I found out this whole world's kicking and screaming, and then at the end, you know, it could be, it could be, let me bring this down here so you can see me play. At the end, uh, it could be, you know, like a, uh, so I found, uh, ended up with an apartment somewhere in Don and Dean. Let's see, it would have to be like a, dun, 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 um, dun, this whole world. Sure enough, it was a girl. She came out kicking and screaming. Oh, kicking and screaming. I was trying to think of a way to slow it down, maybe even. Finally, it was a little girl. She entered into this world. Little pause there. Kicking and screaming. Yeah, yeah. She was a kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kicking and screaming. Something like that, you know? Anyway, we'll see if it goes there. I don't know. I don't know. Because the girl that that's in the song right now, she may end up, you know, saving my life in some way, you know. Uh, we'll see. We can see that she's smarter than I am. She can spot a fool, moi, right? Anyway, uh, it's 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 a. Uh, I think it's time to get on with this with this here lesson, you know. I think it is. We're gonna we're gonna get into some creative creativity creativity today. Uh, 
So uh, when I when I do my class in um, <laughs> when I do my class at Belmont, I kind of surprise them a little bit. I uh, I turn out the lights, you know, in the first class, and uh, our our classroom is in the basement below the auditorium. And so when I turn out the lights, it's really dark except for the little tiny windows in the door that shine, you know, we get the light from the hallway. So it's not totally dark, but it's pretty dark. And I uh, make them repeat after me. Uh, okay, repeat after me. Uh, I am a successful songwriter. I am a successful songwriter. Uh, and the reason for that, and the reason for that is because I hear voices. We songwriters, we hear voices. And we want to, as songwriters hearing voices, we want to do several things. We have a life's mission. The life's mission is to go beyond the ordinary Go beyond the obvious and keep it real. Those three things. Beyond the obvious, beyond the ordinary, and keep it real. In other words, write what you know. And then what? Fourth one? You all know it by now. Lie. Yeah. You know? Great songwriters know how to tell the truth, but they say don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. So basically, you tell your truth, and then you blow it up. All right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, uh, so that's the life. That's the life. That's the life's mission of a songwriter: is to go beyond the ordinary, go beyond the obvious, and keep it real. Write what you know. Stay honest. And then. Go deep. Take your honesty, take your reality, and blow it up. You know? Yeah. At any rate, um, hearing voices. Let's get back to that. Um, this is really important. Uh, we songwriters, we hear voices. And I said, you're successful because you hear voices. Well, let me explain that. There's an there's explanation for that. And that is simply, if you hear voices singing to you pieces of songs or lyrics or melody, sometimes it doesn't come together, but you get, you get that thing. You're in the same secret society. I call it the Royal Society of Hearing Voices. The Royal Society of Hearing, Hearing Voices. Yes. And everyone, including Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, and all the people that you love, they all belong to the same society. And so it's very important that we feel powerful. And that we feel worthy, no matter where we are, on our songwriting path. Because you see, we all start somewhere, don't we? Yes. And so you could be at the beginning of your path and you're moving, moving through it, right? And as you discover that you hear voices, suddenly your path looks somewhat like this. So it's a lot more interesting once you discover that you've got the voices. Much more interesting, right? Yes. And so we have to know that we have great emotions, great successes and great failures all together. It's part of the whole, really. So we shouldn't be upset when days are bad and we play on others, is that, let's take Bob Dylan, famous, super famous song. I have this theory 
that people that hear voices, the creative ones, and you also see visions as well. You can see visions, right? You can have visions, like a painter, a sculptor, right? Um, we all have this weird kink in our DNA that allows us to hear voices and to have visions, unlike other people. Have you ever been told by a relative or a friend, how do you do that? How do you write those songs? Where, do they, where does it come from? I don't get it, you know? Well, that's because they don't hear voices or see visions. In our case, because we're talking about songwriting, we'll just stick with the voices, okay? Hearing voices. So the fact that you hear voices, hey, all right, here's Portia again. Welcome aboard, glad to have you. Um, the fact that you hear voices puts you in the same royal society as all the songwriters that ever lived. You have that special, it's there. It's hard. You think you're having a bad day, so therefore you aren't going to ever be able to write another song. No, that's not true. Stay positive oh, over the mystery. Well, that's not true. You don't know where the mystery comes from. So you relieve yourself of that worry, right? I don't know where it comes from. I'm not worried about it. But you can tease this mystery into coming out and playing by showing up every single day. Now this is important. Showing up every day to write is one of the ways we improve our songwriting techniques. And we're going to get to that more of that in a minute, right? So now we know that we're hardwired into hearing voices so we're in this Royal Society of Hearing Voices, which is a great place to be. Um, we have written, you know, maybe that you're already successful. And I understand what you're thinking. You're saying, well, success means money, right? So here's your success, successful writing. You're chasing the money, but at the same time, you're growing creatively. You're being successful and someday, maybe someday, the two of them will cross and you'll have monet being you know being a true songwriter what we want to think about is writing a better song song right like the song that's at the beginning of this session i'm not sure how emotional um symbolic rather than with the story right we but i experimented going down the story tunnel to see if that's where it was going to go uh I'm not concerned about, will this make money? And if that's the case, then I know I'm onto something, right? Right. Because, you know, um, the number one, <laughs> what I really want to do, and I think what I'm saying here is, a songwriter is really into entertaining someone, including, of course, yourself. Now, so, you know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't have to be brain surgery to write a great song. It's all about just entertaining, right? So let's look at what could be entertaining. We've used this song before in previous sessions, but we can, you know, uh, you know, like, um, ba, 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 It's complicated. You got me rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling, you know what I'm saying? Come on. I love to remember that song. Whenever I sit down to write, I remember that is such a superly simple, ridiculously sort of throwaway song, little ditty song. But it entertained. 
it held my attention very well, I might add. So the lesson is when you sit down to write, think about entertaining yourself. Don't get overly concerned about massive amounts of detail and so forth and so on. Unless in that creative moment, that's where you are. I mean, if you're feeling that storyline just flowing out of you, let it rip, you know? I'm not saying don't write a story song. I just want to remind all you vets that you don't have to get really complicated to write a song that's really under, that's really fun and wonderful to hear, all right? I just keep that one in mind. Um, entertaining, right. Um, okay. We talked about the mystery, right? Let's, let's, let's explore that just a little bit. Um, I believe that 90% of what we need in the Royal Society of Hearing Voices so we have 10% of the tools that we need to get in to manipulate once, we've, once the mystery reveals the song to us in little bits and pieces, right? Once that happens, then we can move it around and manipulate it. It's in the real world. It's no longer in the world of our imagination. It gives birth out on the page in your, in your, uh, in your recorder here, you know, um, once it's, once it's in the real world, we can, we can work with it. But 90% is really just, it's just this wonderful mystery of the voices coming to you, right? And we've already said that you should try it every day. You should sit down and say, hey, mystery, I don't know where you come from, and I'm not going to worry about that, but I am here. I've showed up today to listen, to see what you're bringing me, what you might bring me. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm anticipating this wonderful day of writing. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm sure going to sit here with my guitar. I'm going to start strumming. I'm going to start writing. I'm going to start thinking. Boom, right? There it is. Some days it's better than others. But we forgive ourselves when it doesn't come out great. Right? Because we know, hey, it's mysterious. So we have a bad day. It's not our fault. We were there. We showed up. Right? So forget about the worry. Enjoy your songwriting process. All right? Now this, is, this brings us to another part. And I've said this maybe before, but I'm going to say it because this, we're talking about the creative process all this whole session. So because it's mystery... Um, well, let me word it another way. We know in order to write a great song that we have to push our limits. Very rarely does a great song come out on the first try. Yes, okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You've written a really wonderful song on the first try. Yes, it does happen. And it can happen like beginner's luck, especially, you know, like when you first start to write. I remember those first songs. I thought they were pretty damn good without any, hardly any rewriting at all. <coughs> but as you get into the process and you start writing your, you know, your 10th, 12th, 20th song, you realize, well, you know, it doesn't always come out <laughs> the first time, right? So I like to remind us that in order to get really good songs, we do have to push our limits. Remember we said beyond the ordinary and beyond the obvious? Remember we said that? Yeah, so that's pushing our limits. But when we push our limits, we make a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes, right? The reason is simple. When you push your limits, you're out of your comfort zone you don't have any reference out there on the dirt roads of your songwriting. On the main highways, we've got lots of references. We know where the McDonald's is. We know where the Red Roof Inn is. 
we know where the movie theater is. We know where everything is, right? Everything's nice and comfortable, and we can just mush and around. But when you get off on the dirt roads of your imagination, you don't know where it's going into this dark wood. Sometimes it's a bright wood. Sometimes you, 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 know, you don't know where it's going to go. So there's no reference. So because you have no reference, hey, you're, going, you're bound to make some mistakes, right? Absolutely. So what did I just say? Hmm? What did I just say? <laughs> yeah, been hearing a lot of voices during lockdown. That is the dang truth, if I ever heard it. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the comment. Um, but I just gave you a great gift, and I gave myself a great gift also. Because I don't... I would never tell you something you don't already know. All as I do is I'm a purveyor of things that you already know. You just need to be reminded. So I'm a reminder. I'm the great reminder, right? So we said pushing our limits. We need to push our limits to write great songs. Pushing our limits, we end up making a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors. Wow. Wow. Did I just say what I think I said? Did I just say making mistakes creates great songs? What? I mean, could, what? Could, could, we, could we go over that again? Yeah. Making mistakes creates great songs. Mistakes make great songs. So I had a I had a phone call there from a friend. I'm sure he wants to do a coffee chat over Skype. I have many of those. <laughs> Mr. Popular, they call me. At any rate, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Mistakes make great songs. So, hey, gang. Hey, you vets out there and non-vets, if you happen to be there. You know? Make more mistakes. Make bigger mistakes. Push your limits. Try new things. Remember we talked about when you sit down to write, you're listening to two voices. Number one is the voice that is the copy. All the things you've heard. Oh, good God. Another one that wants to do a session with me. Well, forget it. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. Uh, yeah. So. I forgot where I was. It's all right. We were talking about mistakes make great songs. And isn't that wonderful? Push your limits. Make more mistakes. The great thing is when, you know, I love to give birth to stuff into the real world. Like, my head, my voices often sound like this. The reason for that being, well, first I'm wickedly ADD, as you probably found out from previous discussions and maybe even from this very lecture, you found that I get distracted. Uh, but uh, what I need to do, or the reason why it sounds like white noise is because, in my opinion, it's just a thousand voices trying to tell me what to write. All the experiences of my lifetime trying, pushing and shoving to try to tell me what's the right thing to write. And so it just becomes this big confusing mess, right? So right now, I'm going to give you three exercises to help you straighten out that white noise gray noise, brown noise, purple noise, whatever color it is. 
and get some stuff out in the real world. All right? Of course, you can just sit down and start writing a song. That's great. And, and I encourage doing that. But if you want to just let it fly, let just let your, your nowness, whatever's in the moment, just come out. I uh, give my students what I call the art exercise. That's A-R-T. Artist Restoration Training. Artist Restoration Training. The art exercise. This is a free association exercise. But it has some rules in order to make it the best it can be, right? Anytime you sit down to write is great. Anytime. But if you want to make the best of this particular exercise, there's some rules to remember. The first rule is, and this is a little scary, but it's also a lot of fun. First rule, keep writing no matter what. Keep your pen moving or your fingers typing, which is what I do now. I, I don't write anymore. I, I do everything on the computer. Well, not everything, but most everything on the computer now. Uh, keep writing no matter what. If you run out of things to say, you can simply write nothing, nothing, nothing. But you know what? We all hear voices. It won't, you won't get three nothings before something else pops into your head. The idea is to write as close to the future as you can write. Stay in the now, in the present moment. It's great training. Keep writing, stay in the moment. No matter what. And the reason for this, writing, keep, keep your pen moving or keep your fingers typing, the reason for this is you want to outrun the editor. All right? And in a, in a minute, we'll talk about the editor. Let me write that down. I want to remember to talk about the editor. Because the editor is a topic that we want to, we want to cover. All right? Um, so we want to outrun the edit, editor. Right? We want to train our brain to listen to the very first thing that pops into our head. Because it's unedited. It's your wild mind. All right? It's fun to listen to your wild mind. Mind. Now, I know some of you are asking, like, whoa, man, that's wacky. Uh, am I going to write complete sentences? Am I going to blah, blah, blah? What am I going to... The answer is yes to all the questions. You might just write a series of single words. You might write a series of phrases. You might write a, a complete sentence or two or three or four. We don't know because you'll be in that present, in that state of present moment. So there's no telling what will come out. But it's totally okay to just write single words or phrases. That's all right. And the other great thing is you don't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. All right? Now, uh, let's talk about topics. I forgot to mention that. We're, we're on rule number one keep writing no matter what but let's talk about topics um, you can just of course write about the song that you're thinking of like like I've got a song kicking and screaming um, I'm doing art exercises on that topic and what I read you is kind of an art exercise in a way because it was just a bunch of you know like I don't know where it was going it was just kind of spewing out but uh, you can make, you can write it, you know, I've been writing professionally for, you know, since 1968. So, you know, my art exercises can sometimes be very, you know, structured. It's still very much in the moment. But for you guys, and for myself as well, it's totally okay to just start writing and just don't make, you know, you don't want to rhyme or anything. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, the topics, if you don't have a song topic, you can come up with a daily 
routine topic, like because you you could do this once a day, right? And I break up I break out the topics into two categories. There's stories or real life, the actual things that are going on in the planet around us, out there in the real world, right? That's that's a story based real world topic. You can also write about feelings, emotions, and concepts, right? Right? Hey there, four miss. Glad to have you here. Yeah, yeah. And thanks for the little blingling. Love those. Thanks a lot. Um, so you can pick those two topics. Now, where do I get those topics? Where do I get them? I'll show you where you get them. Hold on. I hope I, I hope my zipper zipped up. Ah. This little baby here. Roger's, this is important. International. Notice it says the original Roger's. All right? Don't get anything past the seventh edition. Don't get the eighth or the ninth edition because it's arranged very poorly. This was the last edition that they did. And this is a brand new one. I just bought this one uh, on eBay for like, you know, 10 bucks or something. It wasn't expensive. But the, the, reason, the reason for this, this is, this is your life put into categories. This, your whole life. This is your hard drive put into categories. Look at how thick it is. Now, to show you um, how this thing is divided up, let's get to the beginning of the... Uh, here we go. Here we go. All right. The book is divided into two sections. This section is all of life's categories. This one here. All of life's categories. And I'll show it to you in a minute. This one, this side of it, is a dictionary. So you can look up the word that you want to know, know about. And then in, in this section, it tells you where to go in this section. You look it up here, and it tells you where to go in this one. All right? Now, let's look at what... We, so we know this one's just a this one's just an index uh, uh, by you know it's it's obviously you know um, alphabetically ordered, but this front section is not alphabetically ordered. It is ordered by life categories. All right, let's look at the categories, shall we? You're not going to believe this. You know we're talking about topics. Now I'm looking at the I'm looking at the front of the book at the table of contents. It says synopsis of categories, all right? Are you ready? Class 1, the body and the senses. The body and the senses? I don't know. Could I use that in a song? I don't know. I don't know this book might be a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time. So you have the bird. This is how it opens. Um, you can see there. Um, you can see birth, the body, hair, uh, clothing materials, clothing, uh, clothing, underclothing, nutrition, eating, refreshment, food, cooking, and it goes on to. Um, it goes on to, you know, like all the, all the senses. It goes into um, touching, tasting, hearing, seeing, and hearing, seeing, and smelling. I think that's the other one. Yeah. All right. And it also goes into the other one, state, the state of being, like hungry, thirsty, sleepy, uh, you know, alert. Uh, those are statements of being, uh, which are also fun. 
Okay, so that's the first category. I mean, we're not even anywhere into this book, and already we've got we got all these feel, you know, all these uh, senses happening. The next one, the next category, feelings. Oh, really? Feelings? Can we use feelings in a song? You know, it's just feelings, lack of feelings, pleasure, unpleasant. Wait a minute. Well, let's read these again. Feelings, lack of feeling, pleasure, unpleasant. These are categories listed down. What's going on there? And that's one of the reasons, again, why I love this book. Is because for every category, there's an opposite category right next to it. What is it about opposites? Contrast. Remember the three tools of a songwriter? The three basic tools are original detail, contrast, and repetition. Right? Those are our three, those are our three basic tools that we're gonna create a dance. A dance of detail, contrast, and repetition. This wonderful little dance, how they combine is anybody's guess. It's up to you on every any particular creative session how it's going to work out for you. We don't know until you start doing it, right? It's a sense of intuition. We're going to get back to that intuition in a minute. So you see why I want you to read this book? I happen to know that 100 is love. So I can go to 100. See, I'm looking in here and I'm going, uh, I see there's numbers. There's numbers here. You see those numbers? So I can go to 100, and, uh, unless they've changed the new one, 100. Well, by golly, it's desire. Whew, well. And right next to desire is dislike. Right? I just love this. Desire. And then it goes on, uh, and then next to desire is eagerness. Oh, love is now two, is 104. I found love. We have indifference after eagerness. Number th 103 is hate. Number four is love. So these are all the, what these are is these are definitions to help you come up with a different word other than just love. So you're finding words, you're finding synonyms and antonyms in this book. This is a book of synonyms and antonyms. I forgot to tell you that way back when we started looking at this book. That's what it is. So to give you an example, I look under love, which, you know, let's, most songs are about love. Love of country, love of people, love of land, love of the ocean, love of fish. Love of Comquats, you know, I'm, Comquat songs are, you know, mark my word, they're going to be popular very soon. Okay, love. Nouns. Oh, really? So it's got love, affection, attachment, devotion, fondness, sentiment, warm feeling, soft spot in one's heart. Blah, blah, blah. It goes on down. What's the next thing? Those are all nouns, 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 Cupid, Amor, Eros. Um, so, yep, there it is, verbs. There's verbs. And here's adjectives and adverbs. Lovingly, fondly, affectionately, right? I mean, this, this book is just fantastic. All of life's categories are in here. Ideals, ideas, science, everything about the home. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It's a great book. So again, going back to, going back to categories. We'll put this aside here. We've worn that out. <clears throat> uh, so when you want a topic, you can get this book, and you can find your topic. If you don't, if you can't think of one, just go through the book. And just find some topic that just suddenly you go, oh, that's interesting. Let's let's explore that for whatever, right?
So that's the way you get topics, either story or real life. You can write a story about a situation, like a particular situation, like Thanksgiving at Grandma's. That's one situation. You can write a story about how I got my first car. That's a longer story. Not one situation, but many situations, right? We can write about, um, in real life, we can also write about what we call objects, things, like your favorite old t-shirt, your army boots. Um, it can be a guitar. It can be, um, it can be a place, you know, Mount Ida, uh, that f wonderful pond where you catch all the fish, Lost Lake. Um, it can be about a color. Uh, it goes on and on. Objects. It can be about a time, a pl you know, like a uh, Fourth of July. Those kind of things. You can write about objects, right? Um, so you can write about descriptions, actions, and conversations that take place in real life. Descriptions, actions, and conversations, right? Now, and then, so on one day, you can write about the real world. The next day, write about a concept. Love, hate, jealousy, power, money, wealth, poverty, um, you know, um, forgiveness. These are all concepts and ideals, right? Willingness. What are you willing to do? What are your limits? You can write about being willing. What are you willing to do? These are all concepts, and you get them right in that book. So those are the two ways you can write. So let's get back to the art exercise. We've talked about the first part. The first rule, which is to keep writing, right? Uh, the second, and of course you can rewind the tape to find out all that stuff, because we covered that now. The second rule is time your writing, right? So you're going to keep writing no matter what, but you're going to time it. Now, you're asking, why would I time it? Well, it's real, real important and interesting why we're going to time it for two reasons. One reason is we want you to do it every day, right? To be a better writer, you want to do this every day, this art exercise. So if we time it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes is better, 20 minutes is even better. But if we do this art exercise every single day, we're going to feel like a million bucks. When that timer goes off and you lift that pen off, you finish your thought and lift that pen, you're going to go into the day. I recommend doing it in the morning. Call it your morning papers. I'm sure you've heard something similar to that. But it's fun while you're, you know, even maybe before your first cup of coffee. Reason being, we have a state of surrender when we're sleepy. So sometimes it's great to just wake up in the morning and hit the morning paper, papers, the morning art exercise before you even have coffee. So you're a little, you're a little, another time is when you're um, just before you go to sleep at night. But I love to do it in the morning because it makes you feel like a songwriter the whole rest of the day because you're going to do this crazy wild mind diary, right? It's a diary of your wild mind because you're going to write as fast as you can, you know, and, and this crazy stuff comes out because you have no time to edit. So you find out, you get this crazy wild right. It's just, you know, it, it doesn't make sense half the time. That's okay. You're, you're learning how to connect, listen to and connect those dendrites. You know, the, the ends of the nerve that come out and the dendrites attach to other dendrites, right? And so you want to just fire those dendrites. And then they also connect to another dendrite up here. So there's a dendrite here and there's one down here. So they're, they're just weaving all throughout your brain. And you want to stretch those dendrites out. Stretch them out. Go into the wild place. Get used to using that part of your brain that you're not familiar with. Get off the beaten path with this exercise and let your wild mind come out to play, right? Unedited, wonderful things, okay? 
So that's why we want to time it so that you would do it every day. The second reason why we want to time it is we're, we're tricking ourselves. We're tricking ourselves to do what? And this is the third rule. We want to go deep. Okay? We want to go deep. Now, deep can be up, deep can be down. So don't let the word deep fool you. You can go, you can be deeply in love, deeply happy, deeply hilarious, laughing your ass off, or you can be deeply sad or, or angry or worried, right? You wanna go deep. So during this writing, when you feel this energy starting to bubble up, steer into it. Steer into it. Be unafraid. Be a, a, a bodhisattva warrior. And steer into that intensity. You've only got, you see, this is the trick part. You've only got what, 10 or 15 or 20 minutes? You can do it, by the way, as long as 40 minutes. You know, your, your fingers get kind of worn out. You can do it as long as you really want. You can set your timer for an hour if you really want to do that, but whew, that's a lot. Um, but every day, I would say 10 to 20 minutes a day. You know, set your timer. And when it's off, get back into your day, right? So that allows you the freedom to do this every day. Now, of course, of course, if the timer goes off and you feel the energy and you want to go again, hey, set the timer again and go again. That's okay. You can go up 15 times. You can do these art exercises all day long if you want to with a pee break and a water break. I'm speaking of water. <coughs> That's lemon water. I squeeze lemon in there and a little uh, honey in warm water so that the honey will dissolve. And then a little of ginger. Mm. Honey, ginger, lemon water. Delicious. Um, donate, donate, donate. Join our Discord. I'm just seeing if anybody made any comments. No. So far, so good. Okay. So we want to time it so that we'll go deep quickly. Because we, we were thinking, wow, wait a minute. I've only got 10 minutes. I've only got 15 minutes. I better get deep quickly. And so we trick ourselves into going deep fast. That's the whole point of the timing. Also, that, so that we do it every day. Okay, that's three. Four is the no rule. We've already talked about no editing, no going back, no erasing, no crossing out. Just keep going. Don't worry about you misspelled something or it doesn't grammatically work. Just don't worry about that. You worry about that later. And this is these are important. No judgment. Ooh, yeah, I said that. No judgment. This is an important one. No judgment. Everything you do in this exercise is absolutely absolutely perfect okay we don't judge we just write there's a difference right we just move our hand and we let whatever is the present moment come out and play all right so no judgment and no rhyming on purpose okay of course you know we have the gene, we have the gene for writing songs, so of course we're going to think of rhymes as we go. But this is what is not going to work. Ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum bum ba dum ba dum ba dum brum brr 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 Slowing you down, man. Right away, when you set up that rhythm, that line rhythm, that songwriting line rhythm, you're setting up 
editing, right? So for the art exercise, ART, artist restoration training, we don't rhyme on purpose. You can throw rhymes in as you think of them, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about the line matching up and all that rhyme scheme, line rhythm. Forget about that. Throw it out. Okay? No rhyming on purpose. Now, you can, yes, you, there is another exercise where, and I give this to my students, write a song in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I know some of you are going, no. Nah. Yeah, you can do it. 30 minutes, and you have to finish it, no matter how bad it is. It can be the worst song you ever wrote. But when the dinger goes off, you're, you've got to be done with that song. And those are so much fun to write. Again, they can be pretty silly, and they can be horrible, but they can be pretty dang good, too. You just watch. It might be another ba 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 Moran. Could be another one of those. But in this exercise, we don't want to rhyme on purpose. Okay? Now the last rule, very important rule, and I'll tell you why, is when you're done, when the dinger goes off, and you are not gonna reset it, you're just gonna you're you're done. Um, you want to go back and read the ridiculousness, the craziness that you just did. And you want to underline words and phrases that somehow, and you don't know why, because the mystery is mysterious. You don't know why, but this word or this phrase somehow interests you. You're going, hmm. It might be the content of it that interests you, or it could be just the way it bounces. The bump da ba ba da bing ka bing. It could be just the way it's the way it sounds, the way it just kind of flows off the page. It could be a very simple phrase. But you just like the way it sounds. It just it's lyrical, right? Now, if you do this in a matter of maybe even just a week, you're going to have underlined all these phrases and words that you can use either, and I'm, I'm saying you might be able to use them, you, we don't know. Again, every creative moment's different. But you can make a list of these words and phrases that you've underlined. And it's pretty easy in a computer. You just underline them, you know, copy and paste. You can have a list of words and phrases, right? You can even put them in alphabetical order. You have this thing called tools, and you can put it in alphabetical order. It's great. Now you've got either one of two things. You've either got a possible word or phrase within a song, or you might have a title, or maybe just a concept that hasn't found a title yet, okay? Okay. Congratulations. You are now doing yourself a wonderful little discipline. Okay? Now, Charles John Quarto defines discipline as... You ready? Get ready for it. Something nice we do for ourselves every day. Nice, sweet. Thank you, Charles. One of the great wizards and songwriters and poets and healers of our day, Charles John Quarto. If you ever run into him, tell him I said hi. You'll be entertained, I promise you that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so make that list. Uh, okay, so that's that's the art exercise. Now, from that, oh yeah. Now, the art exercise is the very baseline 
what I call flow exercise. Now flow is a really nice thing to know when you're writing a song because normally when we're writing we do the other kind of writing which is I call working the puzzle, right? So we have a little idea or we have an opening line or we have a melody and we're trying to put the pieces together. What is this melody or phrase or title or concept? What is it? I want to work the puzzle. Pick the little ideas and the pieces out from here, from here, there, 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 everywhere. Pick them out and uh, see how they fit together. That's called working the puzzle. This exercise I just gave you is the opposite of that. It's going into the fog, not knowing where you're going. And that is another method of creativity that people don't tap very often. So it's nice to know that you have an alternative way to create besides working the puzzle, which we think is the only way to do it. That's when we're writing a song and that's, that's what we're going to do. No. At any time during your songwriting, you can stop and go, you know what, I'm kind of stuck. I don't know where I'm going. I think I'll just do an art exercise. So you leave the lyric, go to another page, and just write the topic right at the top. What I really mean to say is, and then just start writing. Just have fun. Start writing. Just be in the present moment, right into the mystery, right into the fog. Stay in the moment. Try to stay in the now, as close to the future as you can. It's so much fun. And even if you don't really get to the song, you'll still have fun, and you'll be, and you'll be writing. Right? That's important. Okay? You'll be writing, and that's that's what's so wonderful about that. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the editor. When we, we said, you know, we want to leave out the editor, we talk about the editor several times. This would be a good time to bring up the editor. Okay. The way I see, the way I picture this whole thing is this. You've, you're the writer, you're the owner and the CEO of your writing. And you have this beautiful building. Let's say it's a 12-story building. And it's in a beautiful park with trees all around. And uh, you go in the building. You're the CEO. So you have the top floor corner office, right? That's your office. And everything around you and below you is all your songs and your creative, creative moments and all your editing and edits and all the stuff that has to do with your songwriting, right? is in this beautiful building in the park. So one day you go in to the building, you take the pers your personal elevator to the top floor, which has a special key, only you can go there. You go up there, you go into this beautiful CEO office with its private bathroom, a kitchen, maybe a bedroom where you can sleep at night if you get tired. Um, you know, an entertainment room and a conference room when you want to talk about all the different ideas that you have. And then you've got your desk, you've got your, your main office. Well, some days you go in there, you open your door, and there's this mean person sitting at your desk. He maybe has a pencil-thin mustache twirled up, He's wearing all black, and he's got a hat on, you know. He looks pretty ornery. He is the critical editor. All right? And he starts to just lay into you, saying, What are you doing here? You have no business writing. You suck. You're, you're, everything you write is terrible. Uh, listen to this last line you wrote. It's, it's, it's horrible. You know, uh, I, you, know you, you don't deserve this office. Blah, 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 blah you know. That's your critical editor talking you down, telling you you're no good. But we forget. This is our building. 
this is my office. Tell that critical editor to get the hell up out of that chair and get the bleep out of my office right now. Goodbye. See you later. Oh, it'll be kicking and screaming. You can't do that. I, I own this place. You know, you don't know what you're doing. It's... Uh, I, 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 I. Out, 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 out. Call your bodyguards. You got bodyguards. Call them in and say, get rid of this guy or girl. If if you haven't been, if your critical editor, editor looks like a woman, that's fine. Either way. It can look like a dog, a talking dog or a talking dragon. Whatever. Get rid of this person. Kick them out. Even while they're walking across the parking lot, they're looking up at you, shouting, You suck! You're terrible! And you just go, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice life. And now, you got rid of that guy or girl. You want to call up your biggest fan, who also happens to be really brilliant like maybe has a, a master's degree in literature and poetry and maybe even music. That'd be great. You call up your fan and you say, do you need a job editing my stuff? And they'll go, oh, Mr. Beresford, I just, it would be the best and most wonderful thing ever to work for you. Oh, I would just love it. You say, well, you know, here's my address. Here's a, a just go to the main desk. Your name's down there. Just telling you need a key to the upper office. Come on up, and uh, and uh, and we'll work together, okay? And so uh, you call up your your biggest fan, who happens to be also an editor, and they'll and they'll say things like, "Wow, man, you're so good. I I, I knew you were good, and everything you write's wonderful. I do see some little changes that we could make." And you go, "That's why I hired you. That's what I like." I want that positive energy, but I also want to be edited. So good for you. Here's your office. It's right below me. Here's your key. You can come up to and, and hang out with me anytime you want. Here's a red phone. Anytime you want to call me. Uh, as I'm writing my songs, I'm going to send my ideas down to you. Music, lyric, you know, all of it. And you can just, you know, let me know when you hear something that's a little weird. And uh, we'll have we'll have a ton of fun, you know. We can go for you know cocktails after and hang out. We can meet each other's families, you know. We can go fishing. We can hang out. We just have fun. And they'll just be like, "Oh, I can't believe I've got this job. This is the greatest job ever." There's your editor, right? So that's what I do. Whenever I have that voice telling me how bad I am and how I suck. I kick him right out of my office. I say, get the hell out of here. You have no business being in, in my head. I am in the Royal Society of Hearing Voices. I'm in the same society as Dylan, as Joni Mitchell. I'm just not up to that level yet. But because I hear voices, that's all I need to know, to know that I can be brilliant. If I just learn how to push my limits a little better. Yes. All right. So. When another thing that I do. So, so now I've got my editor who's just my biggest fan and just totally just loving me and giving me praise and giving me encouragement. Right. While they're editing, they're doing that. Um, but even so. I can sometimes get discouraged, even with my editor, you know, telling me how wonderful I am. Well, here's another way of looking at songwriting. And I, and I love this. Let's see what time it is. Okay. We're, 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 we're going to wrap this up in a little while, but I wanted to give you this today. Um, I like to look at songwriting like, say I'm a fisherman. 
I love to fish. I'm not really good at it, but man, I love to fish. Love it. Okay. So I realized, wait. Because we're all in the Royal Society, it occurred to me I could put this analogy together. And so I have to give to you. All right? Imagine that the moment you hear the voices, you realize you have this gift of hearing voices. You are given a stretch of a pristine river, a beautiful river, in, in the valley of, of sunny mountains in, in the spring. Right? It's a beautiful 73 degrees. And the leaves have just burst out, and you've got this gorgeous, clear blue river. This is your personal river, your stretch, your little spot on this river of songwriting creativity. Now, you're given a fly rod, a fly reel, line. You're given several rods and reels so that you can fish top water or you can fish you have sinking line and floating line you're giving this you're given this box of fly material you have some store bought flies but you also have a whole little workshop that's you know like let's say it's a mile away from the river where you can tie flies all right now when you start out you're looking out at that river now <laughs> Because it's clear, you can see the trout. They're in there, right? You can see them. You can see little ones up close to the shore. But if you look out towards that dead log or that beautiful boulder out there in your stretch, you can see reflected in the water when the light is just right. These monster German browns, man. 30 pounders. I mean, huge. All right? Those are the hit songs. Then you've got all the different, you've got, you know, half pounders, you've got 12 inchers, you've got 14, 20 incher. Well, that's pretty good. You know, that maybe may, means you've got a, a, a movie sync. You've got, a, you've got a song in a movie and they give you 3,000 bucks. And we can talk about that later. But, uh, so you've got all these different fish. Now, this is the part I love. You're going, how in the hell am I going to learn how to do this? There's a fish i got to ride. No one's taught me. I, I, don't, I don't know. Look upriver and look downriver. What do you see? In my case, right below me is James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, their spots. And right above me on the other side, I don't know which way it was going, is maybe Bruce Springsteen, Ryan Tedder, you know, the rock, the pop rock people, and the folkies are over here. And then way down farther, you can walk down there. There's the blues guys, Lightning Hopkins, Muddy Waters. You love those. And there's Bill Monroe and Peter Rowan, uh, Rex Foster. Yeah, look up Rex. He's, he's awesome. Uh, all these people that you love, they're fishing right near you. And guess what again? You can go and watch them fish. Watch their techniques. You can watch Bob Dylan flinging it out there. You can see the fly. He'll show you. Go, this is the fly that I'm using today. It's called a sinking nymph. Brown. Wiggler. And I'm casting right in front of the log, not behind it. You're going, whoa. Thanks, Bob. That's terrific. I'm going to go back. I'm going to... Can I take a look at that fly again? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. See you later. So what I'm saying is you listen to Bob Dylan songs and you absorb them and you go, wow. Let me try to write a song sort of like that one. You go to Dylan, you go to write a song that's kind of like um, like maybe James Taylor, write a song that's like Joni Mitchell. Listen to a Ryan Tedder song, One Republic, and go, oh man, that's inspiring. I'm going to learn the chords of that. I'm going to figure it all out. They're, they're all right there on the river. They're right there on the river showing you how to do it. But here's the deal. In your stretch of river, those techniques, yeah, they'll catch a fish, but they won't get the big one. You have to learn on your own. You've got to learn your own techniques based on all their techniques, right? You take their techniques and you got to use a little imagination and come up with your own slight variations slight variations to catch that 20 pounder right in other words you got to be a little original not a lot remember we talked about originality being what a series of tiny surprises yeah don't need big ones so the nymph that Dylan was catching his fish on was maybe like a, a 16, a number 16. But you needed a number 14. So you try different things that he wasn't trying, but you're going to try it. Change the color to a, a dark green rather than brown. Little, little changes, little changes. 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Let it go. Yeah. The reason why I love this analogy so much is this. You know, as songwriters, we can get discouraged so bad that we just give up and quit. But if you're a fisherman and you see these people catching fish just upriver, just downriver from you, and you can see those fish out there, let me just tell you something, all you wonderful vets out there. Let me just tell you one thing. You are never, ever going to give up because you see the fish out there. And no matter how frustrated you get, you can keep looking at the people that are doing the hits. And you can go, There's, they're catching fish. They're catching the big fish. I know I can do this. I know I can do it. See, that's why I love it. So that's where my head's at. I never give up. I never back down. Do I get sad? Do I get discouraged? You bet. Absolutely. But the people in my building, I've kicked everybody out of my building that's going to give me any negative energy. Ha! Goodbye. So I've got people around me encouraging me. In real life and in my brain, you know, in my building, right? In my song, in my personal songwriter building. Which is, by the way, which is only, you know, like walking distance from that river, right? Where I go down and actually start catching fish. So... I just wanted to share that with you, all right? Uh, oh, here's my sweetie. Did you just make me a, oh God, you must love me. I do. Thank you. So much. <laughs> That's my personal assistant. That's my editor. Look what she did, she made me a coffee. <laughs> That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking. Pardon me while I, it's still hot. Let's see what it, let's see how it goes here. Oh, yes. That is good. That is yummy. Yes. 
Yes, Mr. Two. Yes. Yes, thank you for the for the imagining cup of joe that you just sent me. Thank you. Or sent somebody. I'm not sure how this thing works yet. I need to hook up on that and find a little bit more about it, but thank you for the cup of coffee. For that emoji. 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 All right. Okay, now Let's do one more thing before we leave today that has that involves um, this thing that we called the mystery. And we mentioned that 90% is mystery. So we can change that word mystery to just intuition. Shall we? Let's just go ahead and call it intuition. We called it mystery to make a point. But really, you know, I think in the real world, we would just call it intuition. We have, we have this built-in intuition because we're hearing voices. Whew, man, suddenly I'm thirsty again. Whew. Ooh, oh, so good. Now, so, this intuition is the thing that mostly writes all our songs. So it's a really important part of our songwriting process. Very important, right? Now, I call it your PI levels. PI stands for Professional Intuition. Your PI levels. Can you increase your levels of intuition to a professional level? Can you? Yes, you can. See, I told you, good news. Good news all around today. Good news all around today. Okay. So you're saying, yeah, okay, fine, but how do we do this? Okay. Well, obviously there are an infinite number of ways to feel better about yourself because, let's face it, a lot of songwriting, it's it, it's a confidence game, right? It's a confidence game. So, how can we increase our PI levels? Well, I've got four ways to do it. And like I say, it's four ways of an infinite number of ways to do it, right? The first, the first one that's not even on this list, let's just say living life to the fullest. And then living it again. We could actually put that one on the list if we wanted to. And maybe I will. I'm just going to write that down. We live, we live once. I'm going to say live life twice and this could be this could be the first rule of pi pi uh, to increase our pi levels okay so we live it once and if you're a real songwriter you're you're going was that a song was that did that was that a song? Should I write that? I think maybe... It, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good idea there. We're always doing that. We songwriters, we live our life full and rich, but at the same time, we're wondering, maybe that's a song. You know, we do this, I mean, if you just knew how many times a day, my sweet... That was Deanna Walker, my fantastically brilliant and beautiful wife, who I love to the ends of this earth and beyond. <clears throat> Who's also my personal editor. So, so the first thing is to live life and then ask yourself, was that a song? And so again, you got the phone. There she is. And she's sweet. Oh my God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> 
Um, <clears throat> so live your life full, and then and then, like a songwriter, live it again, and go. Oh, I think that's a song. Movies, books, conversations, everything. There's a song almost everywhere. You never run out of ideas. Life is literally an infinite number of songs long, right? I mean, every day, there's a song. See, I could take that and make it a song. Every day, there's a song. Every day is a song, yeah. Every, oh, let's, let's, write, let's write that one. Every day, every day is a song. Every moment, every hour, nothing going wrong. Every day is a crayon on the palette. Your life. See what I mean? Every day is this. I got that just off of what I said. You see what I mean? I mean, <clears throat> and these ideas are strictly up to you. Like somebody else listening out there go, that wasn't a great idea. But to me, I'm thinking, oh, I converted that sort of mediocre idea into kind of a, it was the beginning of a song. Now I'll go back at the end of this and I'll go on YouTube and I'll collect that idea. And maybe I'll start something. Maybe I will. Anyway, to get back on track for our final little bit, because well, I got to get going here in a minute. Yeah, we're good. Um, <clears throat> so we want to know how to increase our PI levels. So the first way is to live life twice. The second way. And we've already talked about this, but we're going to put it on this list. The second way is to learn songs in the genre that you're writing in, in the genre that you love, because you have to learn the language of every genre. R&B language is different than bluegrass language. So you have to learn the language of R&B. Now, if you grew up in the South and you grew up listening to R&B, it may be your first language, so it may be quite easy. You may already have that instilled in you. But when I moved to Nashville to be a country writer back in 19... <laughs> well, I came from the South also. South Boston. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know shit from Shinola about Southern talk. I had to learn. So before I even got to Nashville, I had made a decision that I wanted to be a country writer instead of a pop writer. I was a rock and roll writer. But then I decided, you know, I want to try this country thing. So I moved to Austin, Texas. <laughs> Yuck, Boston. <laughs> well, it's cold up there in the winter. But I love Boston. You know, it was where I was raised. It's, it's, I got a little old, little soft spot in my heart for them. You know, pack your car and have a yad, you know. Yeah. At any rate, uh, I don't care for the Red Sox. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, as a Bostonian, we've been waiting a long time for that team to be anything worth a poop. And so finally they did it. And they did it like nobody can believe. I think they won how many games in a row? They won something like what was it? I mean they they won the they won the playoff and the World Series, I think, the whole thing in a row, right? Yeah. Austin is a huge upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Well, Austin's a music town. Boston's a music town too, but it's it's very folky. You know, uh, there's some great folk artists like Mary Goucher, 
that come out of Boston. I mean, they're, you know, and oh, oh, um, Lori McKenna. <gasps> Lori McKenna, Mary Gaucher. Look them girls up because they are freaking geniuses. And Gaucher looks like Gautier. It's spelled G O. C-H-I-E-R, something like that. It's a weird spelling. But Mary Gaucher, and uh, they're just like, wow. Anyway, we're getting off the track here. Let's get back on the track. Um, so we want to listen to the songs in our genre. We want to learn the genre. But we also want to listen, so that's the contemporary, but we also want to listen and learn the songs that brought them to that point. So if I'm listening to... Ryan Tedder, because I want to write a pop song, and I'm listening to all the all the lyrics and melodies, and I'm I'm learning them, you know, on the guitar, to learn the chords and the techniques that they're doing today. I also want to go back in history, to what brought them there. I want to go back to Elton John. I want to go back to the Beatles. I want to go back to Chuck Berry. I want to go back to the Everly Brothers. I want to go back and learn some of those songs too. Because I want to combine the contemporary with the history, with the gorgeous history of that music, to come up with my own personal style, All right? And so it helps to listen to other genres that are similar, but not the same. So I'm learning I'm listening, I'm downloading lyrics, I'm learning the songs, not to play out necessarily, although maybe I would if I liked one, but, um, you know, uh, just to learn them. Um, uh, I forgot how it started. Um, I have G I just saw a face I can't forget Time or place who we just met She's the girl for me I want all the world to see we've met mm -hmm. Had it been another day Might have looked the other way And I had never been aware As it is our dream Yes, I'm falling, she keeps calling back again, falling. Yes, I'm falling, she keeps calling me back again, back again, back again. It is a dream of her tonight. Falling, I'm falling. She keeps calling me back again. Falling, yes, I am falling. Keeps calling, calling, calling me back. So forth, right? So that's learning other people's songs and then putting my own little spin on it, right? And I'm going, this is me. That used to be Paul McCartney and John Lennon song. I own that song now. That's my version, right? So you see, learning other people's stuff is going to help me. So next one. 
the next thing we want to do is we want to read. Yeah, I said read. Remember that? Remember reading? <laughs> yeah. Words on a page. Yeah. So you want to read great literature and great poetry. Yeah. Should I read for you? Should I? Could I? Would I? Check out this. Check this out. This is the first paragraph of this book, Blood Meridian. <clears throat> I'm not a great reader, so I'm hang in there, all right? See the child. He is pale and thin. He wears a thin and ragged linen shirt. He strokes the scullery fire. Outside, outside, lay dark, turned fields with rags of snow. And darker woods beyond that harbor yet a few last wolves. His folk are known for hewers of wood and drawers of water. But in truth, his father has been a schoolmaster. He lies in drink. He quotes from poets, whose names are now lost. The boy crouches by the fire and watches him. You getting my point? I mean, we don't write songs in a vacuum. Monsieur and Mrs. and Mademoiselle Veterans. If you want to be a great lyricist, you got to read great things, right? Now, we're already reading songs, and we're picking good ones. Yeah. But, you know, we want to fill the deep well. You know, the songs we learn, they're all in our head and in our hearts. But down in the power chakra, down in the belly, we want to, we want to gather phrases and sentences and combinations of words that are the greatest in the English language. We want to know how good, how great, how marvelous the English language can be. And we learn from John Steinbeck. We learn from Cormac McCarthy. We learn from Emily Dickerson. Dickerson. We learn from Mary Oliver. Yes. So I recommend, in order to increase your PI levels, to read great literature along with your trash novels. Yes, they're good. All reading is fine, good, wonderful. But we want to fill up this power chakra with words and phrases that we've never heard before that are combined to make unbelievable stuff, right? Unbelievable stuff. How about Eric Johnson? Yes. Wow, Mr. Two. Eric Johnson's fantastic. That's a little obscure. Eric Johnson, Austin. When I was in Austin, I lived in Austin for five years, from 73 to 78, and Eric Johnson was a baby genius and just starting his unbelievable career. So I saw Eric Johnson playing at local clubs. Unbelievable. You talk about putting in 10,000 hours. That dude, he put in his 10,000 hours. He did. Well, yeah, one of my favorite. It would be anybody's favorite guitar player if you just knew he was out there. You can't not like him. You can't not like him, okay? He's that good. Eric Johnson, yeah. Thanks for the tip. That's good. Also, Mark Knopfler. Fantastic guitar player. And great singer and writer, too. Yeah. He's got songs that to this day, make me cry every time I hear them. 
Yes. I'm trying to think of the song. Uh, oh, I've forgotten it. Um, anyway, uh, there's an album that he did about 20 years ago. It has a heart on it. So you can go to Spotify and find the album with a heart on it. Um, that album has several songs that will just blow you so far away. It'll just like, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, we also got Playboy Cardi. Oh, that's that's interesting. Not not heard of. And Playboy is spelled P L A Y B O I. Playboy. Cardi. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Golden Heart, that's the name of the album. And another great album is uh, is Sailing to Pennsylvania or, or Sailing to Philadelphia. Those two albums have some of the greatest songs ever written in the English language. And Mark studies uh, folk literature. And he writes mostly about sort of the modern, you know, it's sort of uh, Celtic style folk music. But back in the day, he was a great rock and roller. Um, he's the guy that it was uh, was in the um, that was the head of Dire Straits. He, you know, he did uh, he did uh, what was that one big song? Anyway, get, getting off the trail here. So number two is you want to read great writing, either poetry or literature. Plays, read, you know, Shakespeare, yeah. Um, yeah, at any rate, move on. Um, the third thing you want to do is you want to write every day. And we've talked about that, so I don't have to go over that. So we want to do the art exercise. Oh, I forgot to give you the other two exercises. The next exercise is the cluster where you put you take the word from the art exercise, the, the word or phrase, or you can just start from scratch. Put a word or phrase in the middle of a page and just cluster all around it. Free associate all around it. This is the holistic exercise because you're going out and coming back. Going out, coming back. Out and coming back. Always coming back to that word or phrase, right? And that's what we're doing when we're writing a song. We're always going out and coming back. So this exercise is, is the baseline um, working the puzzle exercise, right? If you're doing it on computer, just put the title at the top, divide your page into like two or three columns, and just start writing, and you can always go back, and that way you you have a lot of space. You're going to write similar words and phrases that, that you know, that remind you of that, right? Um Let's see, uh, in my opinion, yeah, listen to um, at M-E-H by him. So people go to at M-E-H. Don't know what that means, but I think you guys probably know what it means. Uh, all right. Um, thanks for the tip, Fresh Flower. Very nice. Um, Okay, so we're going to write creatively every day. Do an art exercise. Do a cluster. You just learn what a cluster is. Very easy. The third exercise is an exercise called headlining. And that is getting your emotional message reduced down to one sentence. Okay, headlining consists of two parts. First, what is the emotional message you're trying to say? Because a, so a song, a three or four minute song is nothing but an advertisement for the emotion that you're putting out, right? So you want to say, what is my emotional message that I'm trying to sell today? Number two is, what's the development device that I'm using to get that emotional message across? To give you an example, let's say, send in the clowns. Very famous Sondheim song, Send in the Clowns. 
the song's not about clowns. Okay? So the headline, and you can start with three or four sentences, but try if you can to reduce it down to one sentence. So start with three, four, reduce it down, reduce it down, reduce it down. So that song is about the irony that the singer has just decided, finally decided to fall in love with this girl. But the girl has just decided to leave him. And isn't that ironic? Send in the clowns. Isn't that funny? Send in the clowns. You see? So the headline would be, the irony of this guy falling in love finally and the girl leaving is represented by a circus clown and also by the theater and the stage, right? So the clown doesn't have to be a circus clown. It can be a, a clown that's in the theater. And uh, when you read that lyric, you'll just be blown away. It's an amazing song, absolutely amazing song, beautifully crafted, artistically delivered song, all right? So that's... Um, I forgot where it was. Anyway, the third thing was write creatively every day. The fourth thing is important, and that is make sure you get critique from an expert. As you're writing, you need to get a feeling of where you are on the curve. You know, you're trying to get better and better, right? And you want to, you want to be instructed as to the parts that are good and the parts that are not working. And I, Rick Beresford, actually do that for a living. Really? Yes, Harley? I do. You can get in touch with me by emailing me at mysongcoach at gmail.com. And I will eventually get back to you. I'm a little drifty. But I will get back to you and we can set up a private appointment. We can do it on Skype. We can do it on Viber. We can do it on, um, um, what's the other one? Uh, a FaceTime, you know. We set it up. Send me your lyrics. You can even put them in that, um, uh, in that uh, file that I have. I haven't told you about the file this, this meeting, but I have a file. Um, well, let's never mind that. Just send it. Send me the lyric and an MP3 of your song, and we'll hook up and we'll go through it. And you can play it live too if you want. That's totally fine. But I need to have a lyric. So send me a lyric, preferably not. Um, what is it? A PDM? Is that right? PDM, PDH, PDM file. Send me a, a, a Word doc, or just paste it into the into the uh, email, but I can't, I can't manipulate a, uh, a PDF, PDF files. You know, if I want to type in my ideas and critiques for you and then send them back to you, I can't do that in a PDF. I don't, I haven't figured out the, there's, there's apparently apps that will let you break into a PDF and edit them, but I haven't, I've been working on that, but I haven't figured it out yet. Anyway, set that up and, uh, my, my fee is voluntary donation based on $50 an hour. So you can decide what you can afford to send me because I know some of you vets out there are, don't have a whole lot of money and, and I get that. So yeah, PDF, that's right. Dark Golden Soul, yeah, PDF, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so that's it, that, those are the four ways reading and studying and playing your favorite music uh, and the history of that favorite music, reading great literature and poetry, writing creatively every day, and getting critique from from experts in your in the field that you're writing in. Like you don't necessarily want to get critique from a bluegrass guy if you're writing hip hop. Doesn't make sense, right? I am particularly I write pop rock, R&B, folk, indie. 
reggae, country, and um, bluegrass. I know all those languages. I'm not great at hip hop, although I do write with hip hop writers, but I usually end up writing the chorus part. But still, I've got a good feel for hip hop because I hung out with hip hop writers, especially in the last two years. We've been wor we can, we've been working with artists in in uh, in Atlanta, and that's the hip hop rap capital of the world, I believe. All right, where we're going. It's all rap and hip hop and R&B, and it's fantastic. We have a blast, all right? At any rate, I'm done for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you learned a little something, and I hope your creative process and your PI levels explode with lightness and joy, and that they grow, and that you write a tremendously wonderful song that you and everyone around you loves, all right? In the meantime, if you want to get in touch with me, Great. It's wonderful, too. And so I will see you Tuesday, and we'll continue on this fantastic journey, crazy as it may seem, and wandering as it might be, occasionally. I'm having fun. I hope you are, too. And let's see. We see PDF. Thanks, Rick. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gals. Love to have you here. Really glad to see you again. And, uh, hey, I'll see you Tuesday.